Kia ora. My name is Casey, and today I'm going to talk to you about mycoremediation, which is when we use fungi to clean up our environment. But before we get into that, we need to have a chat, because we have a big problem. 2013 study found that New Zealanders rate water quality as the most concerning environmental issue. Currently, one-thirds of our lakes and rivers are deemed unsafe for swimming. The primary culprit? Dirty dairying. Cow effluent leaching into fresh water, bringing with it nitrates as well as bacteria and parasites. So this quote was from the latest edition of Lonely Planet. It's not exactly flattering, and this has begun to impact our tourism industry. It's also impacted our international reputation. The 100% pure NZ claim has been called into question, and this story has been all over the media. So I want to talk about a solution but it's not really innovative at all. In fact, it's a process that has been around for over a billion years. I'm talking about decomposition, and that's where fungi come in, because fungi are these amazing little powerhouses of decomposition, and I've called them unlikely heroes because they often get overlooked in mainstream science and technology. So when I say mushroom, you probably think of something like this, but in science, we're more concerned with a structure called mycelium. Mycelium are the fine, strands that grow through materials. So the mycelium grows out like roots, and just like your stomach makes enzymes to break down your food, the mycelium makes enzymes that break down whatever it's growing on. And we can harness this and use it to break down all sorts of complex pollutants from pesticides to petroleum spills. And this is pretty significant because it means that the fungi break down these contaminants at the molecular level rather than removing them to be dealt with elsewhere. And this is microremediation. So we've got a river problem, and fungi can help us with that. The three main issues in New Zealand rivers are sediments, which is when loss of plants in riparian areas, the areas adjacent to streams, allow dirt to flow into the water. Nutrients, nitrogen largely comes from livestock urine, while phosphorus comes from fertilizer. Excess nutrients lead to algae blooms, which leads to dead zones. This impacts biodiversity and the fishing industry. And bacteria, which is mostly E. coli from cow feces. E. coli was responsible for the water contamination in Hawke's Bay last year, which left 5,000 residents ill and three dead. There are fungi that can deal with all of these problems. Oyster mushrooms kill E. coli, while white rot and brown rot fungi consume nutrients. Just like fungi can make enzymes to kill bacteria, it's also been proven in labs to make enzymes which attract bacteria that are able to break down pollutants that the fungi can't do alone. It also grows into plant roots, which increases the plant's ability to uptake nutrients and makes it more resistant to disease. This means that we can pair mycelium with riparian planting projects, like the ones that are being recommended by Dairy NZ, to make them better to clean up our environment much more effective. So I've been obsessed with fungi for a long time, but it takes something special to get me excited about fecal bacteria. <laughs> this study, what they did was they built these two big biocells. You can think of a biocell as a fully contained garden, which has water flowing into it and out of it. And each cell was planted exactly the same, but one they treated with fungi, and the other was left as a control. And so they put E. coli into the water inflow and measured the bacteria levels in the outflow. And what they found was that the control cell removed 66% of bacteria, while the fungi cell removed 90%. Even better than that, they did a stress test. So you can see these are the two cells going along. The green is the plant's only cell. The purple is the fungi cell. And at the red area, they basically dumped a whole bunch of cow effluent in to see what would happen. So there's a short lag time, and then you can see the plant cell just skyrockets with the bacteria levels. But the fungi cell barely peaks at all. And this means that fungi is able to respond to emergency events like floods when lots of effluents get washed into rivers. And this could be particularly important looking forward at our future with climate change, where flood events become more severe and more frequent. I think all kiwis can benefit from this. Remediation of our rivers mean that they're available for swimming and drinking, and they minimize the risk of freshwater hazards like Hawke's Bay last year. Protects the tourism industry. It establishes a new industry which creates jobs and opens up new areas of research. 
Mycology is one of the youngest natural sciences, and there's a plethora of things we still need to learn. New Zealand has over 22,000 species of native fungi, and less than a third of these have been documented. We have the opportunity here to become a global leader in an area which still has yet to be adapted by mainstream science. Finally, I think we have an obligation to protect the biodiversity and natural beauty of this remarkable country. We have the tools to heal our rivers and lakes, to leave them clean for our children to drink from and play in, and to do this, we're putting mushrooms on the table. <laughs>